little Charlie is great at eating potato chips. As she tries to take a bite, well, why can't you eat potato chips like Charlie does? <laughs> So how does that make you feel? Hey guys, BG Mike here. Today we are back with another reaction video. This time, we are going to be reacting to the channel called Minute Videos. And the reason for that is because Kuchin Pro asked me to do it, okay? If you are a fan of Story Booth and just story videos in general that are just really interesting and something that we could possibly relate to, which is what I enjoy, guys, be sure to check out Minute Videos. I will link them down below. Hit the subscribe button. Watch some of the videos. Decide if you like it before you hit the subscribe button, right? Now, I have not planned this in advance, so we're just looking at the catalog here. Oh my god. How punishing kids affects them as adults. This is interesting. Listen, my mama spanked me, okay? Well, my mama is not a- she wasn't a good mama, but <laughs> I did get spanked, and I would like to think that I came out good for it, but I know that's a controversial thing. All right, and I get both arguments. Punishing children causes a loss of confidence and self-esteem. I know a lot of people who struggle to make even the easiest decisions in life. It's difficult for them Every to time ask I for things get some they food, need, me and my say wife if they can't want something, what they like or dislike, and they're afraid to say no when people ask them for a favor. One of my friends often goes out with her coworkers, even though she really just wants to stay home and relax. <laughs> my God! Just because she's afraid of what they might think, and because she doesn't want to turn down their request. Yes. This behavior often this comes from a lack of self-esteem that's caused in our childhood. When we get bullied by other kids who constantly make fun of our ideas, uh -huh. or when our parents don't pay attention to our opinions and initiatives, this constant stream of disapproval can cause us to doubt our own thoughts, abilities, and potential, which can affect our development all the way to adulthood. My freaking parents! <laughs> it's like they just explained me. Like, I've gotten better at it, but man, I've had to put a lot of work to be confident about myself. My god. Can you guys relate to that as well? You know how I say in the Story Booth reaction videos, guys, that usually I'm Dr. Phil beats you Mike? <laughs> Minute videos is about to be my Dr. Phil. My god. <laughs> Do I even want to watch this, honestly? Am I gonna break down in tears? Is this a therapy session for me? One. Being told no. Yes. Especially when a child I mean, no. <laughs> is discouraged for their dreams and aspirations. Many kids aspire for unique careers and outstanding goals. And it's natural that children expect their parents to encourage their dreams no matter how unrealistic or silly they may be. <clears throat> what do you want to be? You, what do you want to what do you want to be? A... <laughs> Stop it. What you want to be an astronaut? You got to inherit the pool noodle factory just like your pet your old dad. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Too often, children get their dreams crushed at a young age as their parents try to push them into a different path. But if my mom and dad don't believe in me, then who will? Exactly, because they're the do most this all on my own. They're the most important people in your life. That's all you know. It really hits you in the gut, doesn't it? Hearing your child's desperate call for support and encouragement from the two most important people in their lives. Your kids are ready to dream and achieve the impossible. All that's left is whether you'll choose to support and encourage them or not. 2. Being ignored by your parents. Picture this scenario. A child comes home from school and tells her mother, Mom, I had so much fun today in music class. My teacher even said I was getting better at the piano. The mom, in turn, ignores her child and continues ironing the clothes. Yeah. When she finally looks at her daughter, she demands for her to go oh, do your dear. homework. Oh I don't want to see another bad yes. grade report. I have a feeling that when I become uh, a parent one day that I'm going to do this. I get so caught up in my work. I oh, I need to make a conscious effort not to do this, not to do this at all. I remember when I was growing up, my dad, man, he promised me so many things that he never did. And it really did get to me. As cliche as it freaking sounds, uh, I remember he promised me that we would build a go-kart. <laughs> it sounds very like from a cartoon or something, but legit, he did that and I was so excited for it and the day never came. It's really sad, actually. She demands for her to go do your homework. I don't want to see another bad grade report from you. I'm at loss for words. Can't you see? Your daughter is desperately trying to get your approval just, just and instead play some piano you ignore with her, her accomplishments man. and remind her of Girl. her failures. It's important to realize that the interactions we have with our children impacts the way they see themselves. This is why I'm scared to have children. But in reality, parents are often preoccupied with their own lives and project their own desires and expectations onto their children. 
He's getting ready to go to the pool noodle factory right now. Some parents think that children I mean, I can be motivated <laughs> by comparing them to uh, children who do well in their fields. It's an age-old myth that has been proven to cause diminishing effects on a it's child's self-esteem. It's just like comparing yourself to anyone by ever. Saying, oh, you should be more like your friends. Or, why can't you be more like your older brother? You're doubting your child's abilities, which lowers their self-worth and makes them think they aren't good enough. My little Charlie is great at eating potato chips! As she tries to take a bite, well, why can't you eat potato chips like Charlie does? <laughs> you should realize that every child is special in their own right. No! This video is too much for me! This doesn't just go with children, this goes with everyone in your life! Your spouse? Like, that's, that's why I feel guilty already, it's like, okay, maybe I should appreciate my wife more. I'm not saying I don't, but I should do it more. I'm saying like, I'm not saying that I, I've struggled really bad with that. I'm just saying that like, that's why people cheat usually because they don't appreciate like the uniqueness of, a, of the person they have now. You know, the grass is always greener on the other side kind of deal. Minute video is smacking me with a life lesson. Four. Criticizing your child when they need you most. Making mistakes is a crucial part of Ooh, growing up. As kids, we're like, tempted to try new things, <laughs> explore new places, and engage in activities that put our things, abilities but to the they, test. They need the but sometimes the things don't turn out well. Why can't you be more careful? Look what you've done. Why can't you be more like Charlie? He doesn't break any vases, you piece of crap. Have you eaten your potato chips today? That's it. You're going to the pool noodle factory right now. <laughs> I'm trying to lighten the mood up, guys. This is why we need to practice self-discipline and patience because when life hits you in the face like this and your child does something really horrible or something bad, at least, our first instinct is to just jump down their throat and tell them everything bad. I mean, you've done it. You, you know what I'm talking about. That's our first instinct is to say, oh, how bad it is and all of that. But you need to explain what they can do better next time. You can't just say, oh, you're a piece of crap. Oh, you're so stupid. That does nothing but tear someone down. But if you tell them what they can do to avoid that next time, and you and you let them know that uh, you're not stupid, maybe what you did was stupid, but what, like, but you yourself as an individual, as my child is not stupid, you're amazing. But this is what you can do better. That's how you're supposed to discipline children. <laughs> So how does that make you feel? <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, I feel like that right now. So the next animation we're going to be reacting to is called I Survived a Plane Crash. Now this is one of my hugest fears. I've flown in a plane about three times now. Well, I guess uh, double that, six times, uh, if you're counting for like towards my destination and back. I'm not so terrified of it that I won't ride in a plane. Obviously I have, but it is still always in the back of my mind that it could happen. Uh, so the fact that someone survived to live to tell a tale is something I really need to see. Overhead luggage began falling down, <sighs> some directly on people's heads, laps, and into the aisle. I felt like we were tumbling around in a washing machine. I turned to my side and looked out the window where I saw lightning strikes and flashes battering our plane over and over. Really? I grabbed That's my mother's hands as we locked eyes without a single word or sound from either of our mouths. Amongst all the screaming, crying, and yelling from passengers, oh all I was able to do was stare at her scared and frightened face. We were going to crash. In a nosedive hurling straight down towards the earth, the plane was disintegrating in mid-air with the right wing now completely torn off. I held as tight as I could to my mom's hand, but it wasn't enough. Our entire row was sucked out of the plane with me still strapped to my seat and my mother sucked out of hers. As this Your mother? Your mother got sucked out of the pl- is this real? <laughs> that sounds like an action movie. I, 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 I actually hope it's not real. Your mother got sucked out of a crashing plane and you watched it? That scars. It says right here a true story. Julianne. My god, Julianne. I'm sorry. I, I don't know what else to say, guys. Our entire row was sucked out of the plane with me still strapped to my seat my and my mother sucked, sucked out of hers. As the screams of the people and the roar of the jet engine began to fade away, all I was able to see were raindrops and clusters of trees that looked like broccoli as I tumbled 9,800 feet down to the earth. And then, she nothing. She survived this? She must have I went thought a coma I was dead. Something. At least, I should be dead, but I wasn't. I had been in and out of consciousness for nearly 24 hours, and as I opened my eyes, I saw no one. I could not imagine I heard that. no one. I shouted for help and for my mother, and I shouted until the entire jungle went quiet. But as my body That's caught terrible. up to my mind, I felt a horrible pain in my arms, legs, and chest. Falling the length of nearly three and a half Burj Khalifas, the tallest building in the world. That's... 
I gotta look that up. How in the world did she survive that? That is a tall building. You're talking about three times that. I think the thing that would terrify me the most is landing in the water. Most of the time, you would think, okay, if a plane crashes into the water, it would just float or something like that. But when you crash to the water at that force, it's like hitting concrete. That's what I hear, at least. I don't know if we can count her lucky or not for falling in a jungle. I mean, I don't know what's better, to be honest. I managed to only have deep but not life-threatening cuts on my arms and legs. How did a you survive? A swollen eye that I could not see out of and a broken collarbone. To this day, there's no answer as to how I survived. Dang. How? I spent an entire I'm, I'm day, shocked. and from a distance, I saw what looked like people. With only one shoe, blurry vision, and one eye to see out of, I used my remaining shoe as a guide to test the ground in front of me for any objects or snakes. I quickly went over, relieved that I wasn't alone. But as I got closer, I noticed their feet were pointing towards the sky, and their heads rammed headfirst into the earth, still strapped to their seats. I was what? paralyzed, frozen. I stared at the bodies and noticed one was a woman and thought it was my mother. No. But as I looked closer, I noticed she had painted toenails. My mother never painted her toenails. Please tell me her mother survived. I was so survived. happy, but also ashamed at my reaction. It was the first time I'd seen a dead body. Oh my god. For the next four days, I found and crawled along a river, exhausted from lack of sleep from the hundreds of bugs biting me That's through the so night. That's so crazy, man. I found a bag of candy as my food ration, but that was quickly running out. To make matters worse, I'd hear rescue helicopters flying around in the distance, teasing and, and me, they knowing they couldn't see me through the thick jungle forest, giving me false hope for any rescue. Yeah, it's like, what are you supposed to do? I felt so lonely. There's so probably some afraid. flares on the plane. I maybe. wondered if it would have been better to just die in the crash than go through this mental and physical suffering. This is Still, terrible. I crawled around and floated along the river for days, hoping either death or rescue would come sooner rather than later. Well, I'm guessing. Is this her telling it? After 10 days, still no one or nothing, nothing until I saw what looked like a boat parked along the river. Was I hallucinating? No, I could touch it. It was a real boat. What little energy I had left, I stood and searched for the boat's owner. No owner, but there was a small path which led to a hut with a palm leaf roof. What Maybe I didn't have food, but at least I had some shelter. When night came, I began feeling something crawl in my upper arm. Don't you tell me a spider I had an is an idea what it was, but I didn't want to believe it. I looked down and saw maggots crawling in and around the inside of my cut. Give the squirrel a break! She fell out of plane, she lost her mother, everyone died, and then maggots are now crawling inside of her arm. Ugh. And about the dead body, I have- I've seen a dead body before, and it was- I didn't know what to think, it was scary. Uh, I probably told the story already, but yeah, I, we were driving home, and some- uh, these- this couple were on a motorcycle, and they crashed, and, you know, you just seen her- you just seen a girl laying there, and that's- that's all you really seen. They had a helmet on, I believe. Uh, and that's that's all I saw, but you know, I didn't know what to think of it. It was sad though I, I that's all I know I couldn't imagine the pain that this girl is going through and then to add to it She's got an affected and in maggot infested Just okay when night came I began feeling something crawl in my upper arm I had an idea of what it was, but I didn't want to believe it I looked down and saw maggots crawling in and around the inside of my cut a fly had flown and managed to lay her eggs in my wound my arm was infected, and maggots had been feeding on the dead flesh. My eyes fell upon a canister of gasoline for the boat, and I was reminded of my infection. I remembered our dog once had a similar infection, and my father treated him using kerosene. Can you, you can do Still that? afraid to lose my arm, despite not knowing if I would lose my life, I'm I sucked some gasoline out and put no more than one euro-sized coin in my wound. Instantly, the maggots began digging deeper into my arm. Oh. I bit hard into my oh. shirt as the pain intensified. Some maggots began falling out while others dug even deeper no. into my flesh. Stop. I was forced to pull out about 30 maggots and actually felt pretty proud of myself, <laughs> but there were still a few alive. It's not funny! I'm laughing because she's like, oh, I felt really proud of myself, the fact that I pulled 30 maggots out of my arm! It's horrible! This girl should not have to go through this! I'm so thankful to be in my comfy home, like you have no idea. I will never regret anything for the rest of my life. As long as I'm not in this situation, I have nothing to complain about. You know, we complain about the dumbest things. Unless you have maggots crawling in your arm, I don't want to hear nothing. I woke up to people's voices. Thank it was like God. hearing the Final. voices of angels. <laughs> when they saw me, they immediately stopped talking and said my fragile and exhausted state. For a moment, they thought I was a water goddess, a figure from a local legend that resembled a hybrid she, water dolphin and a blonde, white-skinned woman. 
I introduced myself in Spanish and told them my story. The plane, the stream, how I ended up here. They had heard about the plane crash and ended up providing me with food and treating my wounds. Oh, thank God. Please, the next day, they arm, took me though. into town and I was immediately airlifted to a nearby hospital where my father was anxiously waiting for me. In total, I spent 11 days in the Amazon jungle. Amazon? Out of 91 souls on Lanza Flight 508, at 17 years old, I was the only survivor. Oh, it was later confirmed that my mother also survived the initial plane crash, but due to her severe injuries, she couldn't move. She died several days later alone, in pain, and afraid. You couldn't give me a happy ending to this true story. What the heck? It's so, it's so sad because her mother was like alive. I mean, I don't know how they know that. Like, I always wondered about that. It's like, you know, when people, after they die, they say, oh, well, they died from this. It's like, how can you figure that out? How can you figure out how long they were alive before they died? Like, I, I've always wondered that. I don't know about you guys. I don't want to hear a single complaint from none of y'all. Oh, I ran out of fruit snacks. Well, you just can't. You got nothing to complain about, you got maggots in your arm, that's when you could say something. I gotta say, this girl did a lot better than I probably would have ever done in the Amazon rainforest or whatever she was at. That's, that's, that's intense. That's crazy. I'm so glad that at least she survived. That was not the actual girl's voice either, by the way. So this is actually what she looks like. So the drawing was pretty accurate. Dang, that's, that's cool though. The, the, I'm just, I'm happy for her. Well, did you guys enjoy that? I know I did. That was more of a, uh, I would say, a serious serious videos compared to something like story booth or other things that we have reacted to in the past if there's any other channels you would like me to react to or any other sorts of videos please let me know down in the description uh yeah i love talking about this kind of stuff and again if you guys uh, enjoy please drop a like down below it really does help this has been dr biju and i am signing out okay i'm gonna turn the chair back around okay <laughs> until next time Bye bye